Let's see here. I don't know if you can see it here or not. Probably can. I got a little bit of a D lamb right here where one of the layers is kind of peeled back. Yeah, you can see it right now. It's cooling down. I'm going to go in the grinder and I'm going to go ahead and grind that out right quick before it gets to be too big of a headache. All right, I got our problem area ground out. I'm going to toss it back in the forge and let's go ahead and get this tang drew out. So that's all the forging we're going to do on this. I want to preserve this pattern that's down the middle section of this as much as I can. Uh, I know it may right now look like somebody just kind of beat around on a file, but there's a method to my madness. This tang will actually come up here further, and I did not want to beat in here and cause a bunch of stress and, and D-lambs possibly. Uh, the tang will be higher up here. The overall width of this is wider than the blade that I'm going to use. And the reason for that is, is to keep, like I said, the pattern as nice and undistorted as I can down the center section of the blade. The tip will be distorted, that's fine. It'll help it flow more. Uh, it'll help the pattern look better as it goes to the end. So the next thing we'll move on to is I'm gonna leave this into the forge, leave this in the forge and let it anneal for a while and get softened up. And then we're gonna come in and lay our template out on this. And then we'll cut and grind everything to shape, rougher bevels in, and then get ready for heat treat. So with that being said, I'm gonna put it back in, let it set a while, and I'll catch you in a minute. All right, I'm gonna put my layout fluid on here. I got a template cut out for what I'm wanting to do for the blade shape. I wanna cover it with the layout fluid, then I'll scribe around the template, and then we'll move on to getting it cut out and ground to shape, and get ready to start roughing in our bevels. All right, here's the template we're gonna go with. It's a flamberge design. So I'm gonna put it on here and go ahead and get it scribed out. All right, I cut my tip in on the bandsaw, and so now I'm gonna to move to the grinder, 36 grit belt, and go ahead and grind the rest of this profile out. All right, so what I've done here is trying to square the shoulders on this and make sure they're, they're perfectly flat and even is a pain because you don't have anything square on the sides of the blade. But what I've done is I've scribed the line from the point of the dagger all the way down to the Ricasso area that's dead center of the blade all the way down. So I'm now gonna take my little machinist square here and I'm gonna set it against the file guard and then see if it's going to, to stay true to my line all the way down the blade. And that should tell me whether or not this guard is square in relation to the point and to the blade itself. And it looks like we are pretty good. So let's head on over to the grinder.
All right, with everything set up now, it's time to head over to the grinder and start the fun part. I'm grinding this sucker. So let's get in there and get after it. All right, <clears throat> I've got our dagger rough ground. If you notice, it is not like your standard Chris grind would be to where this would flow with the outside flamberge portion of this blade. Right now it's ground just in your typical diamond shape like a normal dagger. Um, I have plenty of meat still here on the edge. Uh, as you can see here, plenty of thickness still. So what I'll end up doing is after heat treating this, I will come back in with my leather platen on my grinder because it has a softer, it has more of a cushion for the belt. And I will come in and actually grind in into these scalloped areas here and shape them more. But with that being said, uh, we're ready to start our thermal cycling and get ready for heat treat. So let's go ahead and get the forge fired up and get to work. There we are so far. I've already got the areas scribed out to grind in the scalloped areas. As you can see, the pattern's beginning to, to, to pop really well. Uh, everything in the quench went pretty well. Had a little bit of a warp, but I uh, used a jig and got it out during the tempering cycle. Uh, so I have a ton of grinding left to do. So I'm y'all seen left that on this video already. So I'm gonna jump in and get that done. And when I catch you in a minute, I will have this ground out. See you shortly. All right, so here's where we are currently. Got the bevels finalized down to where we're gonna sharpen the edge. But now it's time to move on to hand sanding. So I'll catch you in a bit. All right, I've got the layout fluid applied to this piece of inch and a half quarter inch steel. I'm gonna lay my template out on here. Then I'm going to go ahead and scribe around it, and then we'll get it cut out to shape, ground to shape, and move on to the next steps. All right, I've got some lines laid out here. I'm gonna take the tang here. We're gonna lay it here. And we're gonna come in and mark the tang. And it looks like on my figures that was pretty close. So now that that's marked, we will get the width of our Ricasso or the root width of our tang here. And I'll find the drill bit close to that. We'll come in here and we'll scrub our lines. We'll drill it out and take it to the milling machine, mill the slot, and then get it fit up.
right, now that we got the guard fit up, I've got another scrap piece of mild steel here. I'm going to cover it in our layout fluid, inscribe it much like we did the guard, and then I'm going to drill it and mill out the slot for the spacer above the handle. All right, let's move on. All right, now that I got the spacer figured out and the guards fit up, there'll be some final adjustments and final fitting uh, with some files and the rotary tool. I'm gonna to turn my attention to what will become the pommel. For that, I'm going to be using this sizable piece of rebar, and we're gonna go cut us off a chunk on the evolution saw. So let's go get after it. All right, <clears throat> I found center on this piece. I'm gonna go ahead and punch it and we'll get it drilled and tapped so we can go ahead and start shaping it. Pro tip. Don't buy cheap tools. They suck. You end up having to do it with a pair of channel locks. All right, so we got our pommel tapped. Got a piece of all thread in there, it's nice and tight. I threw some layout fluid on there just to see how many threads I got down in there. It was kind of hard to judge exactly where I was at with this pair of channel locks. So, uh, we'll pull it out in a minute, take a look, and if we've got enough, we'll move on to starting to shape the pommel. All right, we're gonna move on to shaping the pommel. I've got this chucked up in my half inch drive drill, a 36 grit belt on the grinder, and I'm gonna go over and I'll show you a little bit of that, and then I'll get it wrapped up and we'll move on to getting the uh, all thread welded to the tang of the dagger. All right, so we got almost all of our major components. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is drill a quarter inch hole down the center of this block. And I will put a piece of all thread through it with a washer and nut and the pommel fixed to one end. And I will begin to grind it in, ovalize it and shape the handle. And we will also shape this pommel down to match the handle. It's not gonna stay round. It'll be ovalized to match the handle. And so, that's what we're fixing to do now. So let's get on it. All right, I'm ready to come in down here and I'm going to cut a notch out on the end of this tang. And we're going to inset our all thread up in there and then weld it up. And uh, we'll come back in and we'll flatten the sides of the tang down, flatten the sides of the, of the all thread. Uh, we should still have a substantial thickness doing that more than enough strength for this and uh, then we'll be ready to start fitting the handle and the pommel and everything up and get the handle shaped. So let's get with the bandsaw and cut the notch in here. Alright, so we're welded on. And just for those that's going to inevitably say, oh, that's going to be too weak, or oh, it's going to break off the first time you hit something. I did the same technique. A lot of people, a lot of knife makers do the same technique. I did the same thing on Fortune Fire. Ben Abbott beat the living daylights out of my knife on copper bars and everything else. I did suffer edge, edge damage due to a bad forge weld, but my 
thre all thread that I welded in did not break. I've done this on a lot of different projects and it works just fine. The weld's good and strong. It's the same thickness as the tang is, so it's not weak. So we should be good to go. This is a dagger after all. That being said, that rant aside, let's get the handle drilled out and get it fit up so we can get it rough shaped. Okay, we're gonna line this up the best we can. Make sure it's good and straight. I got a one, two, three block up here and under the blade portion holding it in place. Make sure everything lines up with our hole. <clears throat> now I'm gonna go ahead and sketch around right here. And then we'll get our handle brooch broach it out then we've already got a quarter inch hole through there so the all thread will go through with no problem down there not too worried about that and once we get this portion done we'll come back i've got a template for the shape of the handle i want and we'll lay it on start shaping the handle get it ovalized and cleaned up and ready for fluting all right we got everything broached out and we got the fit up good. Uh, I will come back in up here and I will inset the Ricasso area down into the guard. And we have plenty of room here to screw this down to tighten everything back up. But everything's in line, everything's straight. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna rough shape this handle. Almost forgot before moving on to the hand line to shape this upper spacer. So we're gonna go ahead and get that done right quick. All right, I've got some lines drew on here for reference marks on the handle. Uh, I've got a piece of all thread running from the pommel all the way up through the top spacer. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna grind right up close to the edge. Of course, I've still got some finishing to do, so there'll still be some pieces here, but that, you know, like little lips and stuff that I'll have to grind off some more. But this will allow me to hold on to the pommel and hold on to the thread while I'm working it while keeping everything straight. So let's get the grinder started up and let's get to work. All right, that's what we look like so far. Almost ready to lay out some lines for fluting. I'm going to go ahead and turn my attention up here because I want to get this all cinched down good and tight and make sure there's no lips or edges. I got one right here I got to address. Uh, I'm thinking though when I inset this Ricasso and pull it all together, I think it'll go ahead and turn around in line. So let's go ahead and look at this.
All right, I'm fixing to start cutting the grooves in the handle for the wire inlay. I'm going to show you the tools that I use for that. Uh, first is this triangular file here. It's what I'll use to cut the initial groove and then to actually cut the groove in for the wire to set in, I use this right here. This is just a cheap $1 X-Acto knife, a hobby knife, whatever you want to call it, scalpel. I took the razor blade out and I cut a piece of a uh, hacksaw blade and for the size of wire that I'm using the depth is literally just the depths of the teeth but to keep from trying to uh, but to keep from messing up as I do this I actually cut two more pieces of uh, hacksaw blade and ground the teeth off and just super glued them to this uh, right at the depth I need so now as I cut these grooves in I don't have to worry about cutting too deep it's nice and solid I got this idea from Steve Culver. He is an ABS master smith. Uh, there's a forum online uh, at the ABS website where he has PDF files that goes in depth on how to make one of these. It's just simple and easy. And this right here is what I'm going to use to clean up the flutes themselves. This is just a leather working tool with a uh, Dremel sanding drum chucked up in it, screwed down. And this is what I'll use to work those areas in between the wire inlays. Uh, to get them nice and clean and work through. It makes it a lot easier, uh, a lot less of a hassle than trying to do it by hand or with something else. So with that being said, also uh, I got a piece of wire and the reason I have the piece of wire is even though this is set here to the proper depth, I want to have a piece of wire to lay over and make sure that it's consistent all the way around. Uh, and I can do that by checking it with this wire. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to show you how I cut one in and then I will get it knocked out. All right, as you can tell, I've already cut several in. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start right here. And I've got my triangular file here. And I'm just gonna come in and mark the edge just a little bit. Once I get that initial groove cut in, I will just begin following my line. I drew the line on here with a Sharpie uh, because a pencil does not really show up very well on this this wood being as dark as it is. And so just small sections. And the main point here is to just stay on top of your work and not try be trying to work over here where you can't see. Just rotate it. I've got it uh, bolted down to this uh, piece of all thread here. And so I'm just going to work that a bit. And then we'll come in here and just start cutting it in. Like so. Nice and easy. And then we'll loosen it, turn it around a little bit. Come back in. And start chasing it over. Like I said, just take your time. Get your first groove in there. Doesn't hurt to go over it a few times just to get it a little bit deeper. That'll just help the saw ride in it better. And just try to get them as centered as you can. Uh, I tried. They're they're not perfect, but as I clean up the in between areas with that little drum on that other tool, it'll kind of straighten them out some. All right.
All right, there we go. And then I'll just come back in here with this and start working in between, kind of evening them up where they need to be. And get it up to a high grit. Then I'll take it to the buffing wheel, buff it real good, and we'll be ready to put the wire inlay in.